chair. <laughs> Greetings brothers, I'm Nelb and welcome to another video. And today we're going to be talking about the Iron Cage. And it's also going to be a short video as well because there's not much information talking about it other than just having like the old sources from the Index of Studies 1 and 2. Mainly talking about the one on the first one, but the second one is a bit eh. But overall, this is going to be an interesting topic. The reason it's going to be interesting in this topic is because on one hand, the Imperial Fist fans will say, no, it doesn't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, show me the evidence or else it doesn't exist. Like, why we, the most stubborn defenders of Terra and mankind, will we ever lose a siege fight? Ever. Why would you even say that? Like, that is such her heretical ideas. Ugh. And the Iron Warriors fans, they will be the, pretty much the opposite where they will pretend that we're on the Iron Cage and they will have this ego boost that pretend to be like, yeah, we were there, we won, we beat your asses, we got revenge from that. Now, go crying in the corner that you suck at Siege Warfare, you fucking yellow piss-looking Lamentus chapter pieces of shit. Now, go in the corner and suck your mom. Suck your mom! Right. Suck, suck your mom! Suck your mom! Suck your mom! Gotta clear the stage for the next fighters. Suck your mom! The one thing that I enjoy the most is the, not just the Iron Cage, but the legions that were in the Iron Cage, they're having this bitter rivalry of who has the biggest dick energy and who's better at Siege Warfare, and they're just trying to compete themselves or who is better overall. Like, there's also Space Wolves and A Thousand Suns and the Dark Angels and Fallen and other legions that I can't remember, but that's because, at the moment, they're not really important. Because, what is better than two... Legions trying to compete who has the bigger dick in siege warfare. I want to see that shit. They're siege warfare, not their dicks. Do they even have dicks? And keep in mind that those sources that I read is released from the early 2000s. So it is the Astartes book one and Astartes book two. The Iron Cage is mainly on the first one, a little bit on the second one, but mainly on the first one, where it talks about all the battles and shit. But it's a really short story as well. It's not so much of the Thamas Crusade. Like, holy shit. And not only they're old, but since with the recent books of the Siege of Terror, it has changed a little bit. Like, the one, the main one was that Perturabo in the old lore, he fought at the Siege of Terror, fought to the end, and kept on fighting, and he was so close to breach on the walls, and they lost because of the Ultramarines and reinforcements that are coming to Terror. That has changed with the new Siege of Terror book, where I'm not going to spoil much. At the same time, I'm going to spoil, so tough luck. Petrarabo was at the Siege of Terror, fought to the walls, and because he was seeing this corruption that was happening to his brothers all around him, and especially Horus, who was getting, like, bloated with corruption to the point that he doesn't see Horus anymore. So what Petrarabo did is he took his bags, took the nearest Iron Warrior with them, carried him over, and they all walked out and just left Terra. I do like the new version now, just because now no one can talk shit to the Iron Warriors that they lost the Siege of Terra now. <laughs> Suck shit! <clears throat> so with that example, just, uh, just take a grain of salt with the old sources that I just yoinked. There are some main stuff that are still true with the um, current Hor Horus Heresy books, but there are some that just like, yeah, just changed a little bit. At the beginning of the Great Crusade, where the Emperor goes, takes his Primarchs, the Iron Warriors meets Perturabo, and Imperial Fist meet Dawn. And at the, at the beginning of them, uh, between, between the Legions, it was alright, it was a bit of a meh, but over time it started to build the rivalry between them, because between the Legions, they are, they are starting to get bitter with each other, because the Iron Warriors and Perturabo were doing all the dirty work and all shit jobs, and then you have Dawn and the, and the Imperial Fist doing, like, the best jobs ever. It's just, like, similar where I play Overwatch and I carry the team, but the other fuckers got, like, the prize. This is bullshit! Now, the, with, between the two Legions, of course, they're similar, but the difference is where Petrarabo and the Iron Warriors are cold, calculative, can sacrifice the numbers because they have enough numbers, to be honest, but they're really brutal in siege warfare. Where Dawn is calculative, of course, but he is very cautious and will sacrifice numbers if necessary. So you can compare between the one who will just go straight to the wall and see if it breaks, and the other one will defend itself to the point that he will just fortify. And if you know what I'm referencing, what, I, what I'm thinking in my head, of course, 
You, you get the reference. So during the Great Crusade, the the two legions of the Primarchs, you know, the rivalry is like, it's not as boiling, it's, it's getting there, but it never peaked yet. And the one point that it did peak was at the event at Shravan. Shravan. I'll just call it Shravan. Fuck it. Shravan. 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 <laughs> Alright, back to the point. So, the tip of the iceberg that made the rivalries split even further and made them really bitter rivalries was at the uh, the Battle of Shravan. Shravan. <laughs> so what happened to that battle was, the Aru Warriors will go and breach the walls, and then they will hold. And once they're breached, they will let their fellow legions, the Imperial Fist, the Dark Angels, and the White Scars, they will go uh, proceed further in order to achieve victory. So, after their victory, they had a victory feast. And during their victory feast, Fulgrim walked up to Dawn and asked him if the Imperial Fist defenses that on the Imperial Palace can resist the Iron Warriors. And Dawn's response was his defenses can hold any attack, especially the Iron Warriors. How do you think Petraba took it when he heard about it? Of course you do! He fucking raged! Petraba was so mad that he was so close to punch through his screen. Rogal Dorn's colossal chain blade. Kicked through a fucking door. And he was gonna grab the nearest Iron Warrior and fucking yeet them off the space. Like he was that pissed. And because Petrarabo was so mad that he was so vulgar and he talked massive, massive shit against Dawn. Like it's a Modern Warfare 2 lobby. But the problem is, Dawn isn't there. So what I would imagine is that Petrarabo would just launch his Xbox 360 and send a voice message to him. And he will say, like, very nice words to him. What the fucking shit are you down the mark for? Playing your fucking mouth, mate, to my grown man. You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking brawl, come down to Smevic, ask for Danny G. I'll come out of my house, and I'll break your fucking legs. And that's where the story began between the two legions started to separate them even further than before. So they did have a rivalry before, but this one was like, yeah, this is where it's, it's confirmed that they are. More split than ever. So there isn't much to talk about the Horus Heresy other than the Iron Warriors um, betrayed the Loyalists on Instrument 5, massacred them all. They walked up to the Imperial Palace and they had the Siege of Terra, which obviously they lost. And that was the end of the Horus Heresy. After the Horus Heresy, we have the Great Scouring, which is pretty much in short, the traitors were escaping from the Loyalists after the big loss after the Horus Heresy. No shit. And the abandonment of the Chaos Gods, which was the reason that the Traitor Legions will retreat into the Eye of Terror. So during this event, we have the Iron Cage, but it was on the planet of Sebastus IV. Petrarabo challenges Dawn to fight on his new building called the Eternal Fortress, which is a fortress. Which Dawn accepted it and publicly declared that he would bring Petrarabo back to Terra in the Iron Cage, which henceforth we have the name Iron Cage. Surprisingly, in the book, Gilliman wanted to offer help to Dawn so they can take the Eternal Fortress together. But Dawn didn't accept the help because he wanted vengeance. He was so angry. He was so pissed. Not corn angry, but more of a cold rage, boiling points that he wants to smack the, like, the nearest gorilla that he sees. And the reason he wanted vengeance and the reason he's so angry is because the fall of the Emperor and the image of the Imperium of mankind and the Imperial Truth all crumbling to the floor, and it, it, it's burnt to dust. And the second reason is, it's Perturabo. He was a traitor, and he wants to kick the shit out of him. But just as planned, Perturabo wanted him to come alone so he can directly put him into a trap, where he would just, like, delete, all, pretty much, Alt F4, his legion, and Dawn into existence. I've won. Exactly as planned. If you're an Iron Warriors fan, and you know your Primarch well, lore-wise, you already know all the stuff that I mentioned at the start was, you know, he's really brutal, he's really good at Siege Warfare. The one that I did not mention was, he likes to make labyrinths. And labyrinths, in short, they're just mazes, but ten times bigger and more complex. And the one that I like the most, this is related to the Android Stominatus book, of course, it's that if Perturabo ever gets underestimated, he will punish them so hard to the point that there is no coming back. 
ever. And if you read the book, let's just say I really like the scene where um, Petrobo just beats the shit out of Fulgrim in front of his captains. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna spoil it any further, but that is my favorite point in that book. So why do I even mention all this? I think it's because in the short story of the Iron Cage on the Astartes 1 book, I think what's happening is, because um, Dawn is taking the caution button out of the way, he removed it from his keyboard, and he, he all he wants is just vengeance on Petrobo and spank his ass, and he doesn't care about anything else but that. Well, Petrobo had his plans, he knows what he's doing, and etc. And I might be wrong on this, but what I think what happened here is Dawn is underestimating Petrobo. So, in return, we, which we all know about the conclusion of the Iron Cage. So, do you understand how the Internal Fortress is structured and in before the battle started? Like, I have a paragraph from the Astartes 1 book, of course where it will give like a visual representation of how the fortress is structured. Rogodon expected honorable battle, but that was not Petrobo's agenda at all. The Eternal Fortress was a sophisticated trap, and its center was a keep sitting in the middle of the 20 square miles of bunkers, towers, minefields, trenches, razor wire, tank traps, and rebounds. Radiating out from the keep in the square of an eight-pointed star were underground tunnels that connected to the surface of fortifications. All the entrances to the underground network were concealed and the keep itself was a decoy of no real value. Most fortifications are limited by the need of protecting something. The Eternal Fortress was a 20 mi square mile of killing ground. That ain't normal fortress, I'll tell you that. Yo, my boy Petrobo hit a nice fortress. Sheesh. <laughs> uh, I can shut the fuck up now. Start of the Battle of Sebastus IV, there was some orbital and some air fighting going on, but more importantly, it was the fight on land. The land battle was pretty rough, mostly for the Imperial Fist, because even when they started landing and proceeded forth into the Iron Warrior's uh, first line of defense, they were getting pinned down by manned trenches on the first fortifications that were set from the Iron Warriors, and they were being fired upon. Also, they had some sneaky Iron Warrior squads that would appear from the hidden bunkers with crack grenades and melter bombs, which led also to the halt of the Imperial Fist tanks events too. The Imperial Fist did halt this threat while being pinned down for a time, but luckily for their stubbornness, they were once more proceeded forward into the trenches, but only to find them empty. This was continued by the plan Petrobo will pull back some of his defenders and called upon others to hold it, while Dawn remained convinced that victory is in sight, pressed the Imperial Fist forward. This was repeated over and over again from tank by tank, and the Imperial Fist numbers that were the size of companies now became the packs of squads, and every step they would take more and more losses as they kept proceeding forward, to the point after six days of fighting, each marine fought individually. The whole siege lasted for three weeks and six days. The Imperial Fist were stuck and dug in while being surrounded. The Imperial Fist captains asked Dawn for a breakthrough, which Dawn refused because of his fucking stubbornness, and he continues to call one last charge onto the defenses, or... He will be calling Perturabo to face him in Mortal Kombat, which, of course, never happened. Funny enough, in this section, the Imperial Fists are stuck and surrounded, and then they charge over and over again by Dawn's orders, which makes the situation even worse, just because Dawn couldn't accept that he's shit in Siege Warfare, okay, I'm kidding, but with his impatience and anger, it clouded his judgement, and he just wanted vengeance. With that all happening, Perturabo could have deleted them, he could have easily defeated them, just a counter charge, and he would have wiped them up into existence. Like, Perturabo had Dawn to the balls, and the only thing Perturabo's doing right now, he's just teasing him, while Dawn is just being there restrained. And don't take that out of context. But jokes aside, the reason Perturabo didn't kill the Imperial Fist straight up is because he enjoyed a little bit too much tormenting his enemies. Not like the Emperor's Children or the Dark Elder way, but more of a mental game than anything else. Like, he could have alt f for them into existence, but he chose not to. And because of this of Perturabo tormenting the Imperial Fist, this gave time for the Ultramarines to arrive and help the Imperial Fist. Just like the Horus Heresy, but this time they actually fucking arrived, and forced the Iron Warriors back into retreat. Perturabo had no interest to fight two chapters at the same time, so instead, he concentrated to prevent the wounded and the dead Imperial Fist to be evacuated from the siege.
It was a loyalist victory, but overall, it was a defeat for the numbers and morale of the Imperial Fist and Dawn. Not even on? Even though the start is one book, it doesn't really even mention about um, how many losses did the Imperial Fist and the Aria Warriors took casualties, like how many of them. But the way I understand it in the short story was that the Imperial Fist took way heavier losses and casualties from the Iron Warriors, and the morale was non-existent at all. Dawn himself was such a broken man, he was actually way worse after his father's death, that him and his Imperial Fist took 19 years for them to recover and head back to war. You could say the reason Dawn took that long to recover, because he had... Low iron. <laughs> now for the real question. Did Pratraba became a demon prince? I don't know why you're asking me that. Go ask Pratraba. In the old source of the Astartes 1, it does mention that Pratraba does become a demon prince by sacrificing the Jing seed of the Imperial Fist to the Chaos Gods. But if they do change it in the future that Pratraba doesn't become a demon prince for whatever reason, then he will have my Chad privileges to him, and I will be very surprised if if they ever do that. But, for the sake of it, let's just say he becomes a demon prince. For now. Now, something that I want to put a little bit off topic, which relates to the Great Scouring, is that once they're done with the Siege of Terror books, I really hope they get their hands into the Great Scouring after that. Or, maybe surprisingly, maybe get their hands on doing the Unification Wars. I'll be really surprised with that. And I would not be just be surprised with that. I'll be, like, really interested if they actually do it, but not now, maybe like further along the line, uh, maybe even after they might be running this Great Scouring, if they get their hands on it, of course. Like, as interesting as it is, but then again, you have to think about, you know, is it going to be like a separate category? As in like, there's 40k, there's Horus Heresy, and then they have to make like a new one, like a Unification uh, Wars, and then you have to make like new codexes, new models in order for it to play on the tabletop. Eh, yeah, I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but it is interesting to suggest that. So I'm just throwing it there, which I think it would be interesting if they do Unification Wars. Um, but hey, Great Scaring is more possible, but Unification Wars, uh, I I don't think now, um, or even later, maybe much more later than that. So thank you for watching, my brothers. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're new to this channel, you know what to do. I don't have to tell you, and farewell my brothers, and take care.